Hi, I'm Tam with the Scove with your solar storm forecast for the week of March 10th. All eyes are on region 2297 this week, and here's why. This thing was announcing itself before it even became visible on the east limb. It fired off an M-class flare back on the 6th and let off a solar storm as well, and since then it's just been sputtering and kicking off more flares. It's a highly unstable region. Part of that is because of this hot ribbon. Do you see this big hot ribbon of plasma here? This is the remnant scar of that monstrous filament that erupted back on the backside, and it's destabilized the whole area. Meanwhile, region 2297 lets off an M-class flare. This is an M92 you can see here, and then it's, since then it's let off an M4.5 flare and a high C-class flare. So they just keep coming, and we're expecting more. Switching to our M-flare threat meter, you can see we did have a few instances of M-class flares back on the 2nd and 3rd. That was from region 2290, which rotated off the west limb and is now on the backside. Things calmed down a little bit until region 2297 showed up, popped into view, and you start seeing the M-class flares coming. We actually had that M92 there, and it's died down, and since then we're starting to pick up again. So there might be an X-class uh, flare in our future. Switching to our solar storm levels, if you've known when to look, we've actually had a few instances of solar storms. We've had some grazing solar storm passages that have been enhanced by high speed streams that have popped us over storm level, especially on the first and the second. Since then, we've kind of just hovered right around unsettled conditions and up and down, up and down, which has given us some nice aurora over the last week or so. And this brought us beautiful aurora pictures from Norway. We even had a marriage proposal in Sweden with stunning visuals in Iceland and gorgeous aurora in Alberta, Canada and in Saskatchewan. Now returning to that solar storm that was associated with that M9.2 flare, this is a difference image of the sun, and dark regions show where solar storms are being launched. Now you can see it's really dark on the limb, but there's also this area here that kind of comes across to the center disk. Now when we switch to coronagraphs, this is also a difference image. You can see the main blast of that solar storm launches this way, but following it is something like a little bit of a halo that kind of encircles the sun a little bit. We think that part might actually be part Earth directed. Switching to our prediction model Enlil, this is NASA's version of the model. Now if we look down over the north pole of the sun, you can see that solar storm coming out and it sure is going east of Earth. But if we pull back just slow, slightly and see the impact footprint that this makes, you will see a big splash that goes east of Earth, but near the tail end of that thing, you can actually see that there might be just a little bit that grazes by Earth. Now combine that with the coronagraph images we just saw, and there might be a little bit of a glancing blow expected late on the 10th, if any at all. So what else does the sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our backside monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun from behind. Now, this was a few days ago because I wanted to show you Region 2297 was firing off solar storms before it even came into Earth view. So that should continue for us. Also, behind that, you can actually see there's a big coronal hole that's going to be coming around, and that's going to give us some high-speed wind after uh, 2297 rotates back into center disk. So it should be a very interesting week. Returning to the disk, you can see region 2292 and 93 have now rotated off of the west limb, leaving region 2297 the only region in Earth view. But it is keeping us plenty busy. As you can see in this inset here, all of this blue lightning, this is electromagnetic reorganization, uh, showing that the region is incredibly unstable, and it has, still has the strong potential of firing off high M-class flares and even an X-class flare. We will be under an M a major flare watch probably for the next week. Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the next few days, we are still feeling the effects of a high-speed stream, but it is waning. NOAA is giving us about a 25% chance of a major storm at high latitudes on the 10th. Now, if you couple that with the possibility of a grazing passage from that solar storm that's planning on passing us to the east, we might see storming that continues into Wednesday and Thursday before things begin to settle down. At mid-latitudes, expect only about a 15% chance of active conditions uh, in through Thursday Thursday before things settle down. Now we did have that M5.8 flare just moments ago, and with that is an associated solar storm. It's hard to tell if it's Earth directed yet. We need to wait for coronagraphs, images, and models to give us more information. But if it is Earth directed, then we might see an uptick in activity around the 14th uh, if that thing begins to uh, impact Earth.
Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the next couple days, NOAA is giving us about a 40% chance for an M-class flare from region 2297, and there's a good chance if we keep seeing these M-flares that that classification will increase up to 50% or maybe even higher over the rest of this week. Regarding particle radiation storms, we do only expect about a 10% risk of a particle radiation storm at this time, but that also may increase as region 2297 rotates to the west limb. Now during that M5.8 flare that we just had moments ago. A good colleague of mine, Land Lamp Fear, who's an amateur radio operator, KC7 Run, was on the airwaves with me and we were doing some tests to see what kind of noise floor and how bad the static got on the bands during that flare. And I just wanted to say thank you for all of the people who reported in, giving him information about what your noise level was and, and uh, helping us out for this particular test. And I especially wanted to say thanks to N5SDO, that's Dave in New Mexico, and N5DAR, uh, that's Mike, for making me feel very, very welcome on the bands this morning. I really appreciated it. So this week is very exciting. Although we only have one active region in Earth view right now, it is an X-Flare contender. So expect to have intermittent issues with your GPS, your satellite phone and satellite internet, and you ham radio operators. Expect possible blackouts during these very large flares. Now for you aurora photographers, we do have a glancing uh, solar storm passage late on the 10th. It might not bring us very much, but there is a possibility of aurora, especially at high latitudes. Outside of that, we're going to have to wait until region 2297 gives us more solar storms or until uh, about the 15th when another high speed stream blows through and gives us another possibility for aurora. So it looks like to be an exciting week and stay tuned. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.